Welcome back to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss news and views about pop culture, science fiction, fantasy, food, cooking, the outdoors, and more. It's time, once again, for another depressing dose of Dismal Disney. Absolutely no one can deny that The Marvels is a complete box office failure with its utterly pathetic $47 million domestic opening weekend box office. Not the trades, not the shill media sites, no one. But a lot of people are trying to understand why the movie is flopping as much as it is. Obviously, there are multiple contributing factors. To grasp the extent that the movie is flopping, we should take a look at the movie's $47 million domestic opening weekend box office in terms of how many people actually purchased tickets and compare that number with the rest of the MCU's movies. To do that, we can estimate how many people purchased tickets in the U.S. for each of the MCU's 33 movies during their respective opening weekends by dividing each movie's domestic opening weekend box office revenue by the average movie theater ticket price that existed when each movie premiered. Since the movie spanned a period of 15 years, movie theater ticket prices have gone up over that time. So even though one particular movie may have seemingly earned more than another one due solely to its box office revenue, it's entirely possible that fewer people overall may have seen it based on how many actual tickets were purchased. So with current average movie theater ticket prices of around $10.53 apiece, the total number of people who purchased tickets to see the Marvels in the U.S. was around 4.46 million people. And that is the smallest number of domestic ticket buyers for any MCU movie during its opening weekend, as shown in this chart, which displays the number of ticket buyers in millions to make it easier to read. For 2008's The Incredible Hulk, which now has the second lowest domestic opening weekend box office for the entire MCU with its $55.4 million, that represents around 7.72 million ticket buyers based on an average movie theater ticket price of $7.18 in 2008. But there are three other movies that had fewer ticket buyers than The Incredible Hulk did during their respective domestic opening weekends, even though all of them earned higher revenues than The Incredible Hulk did. 2021's Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings and its 7.25 million ticket buyers, which went on to barely break even. 2021's Eternals and its 6.86 million ticket buyers, which flopped in theaters. And finally, 2015's Ant-Man and its 6.79 million ticket buyers, which went on to make a small profit. So just between these four movies, as shown in this next chart, the 4.46 million ticket buyers that the Marvels had during its opening weekend represents a decline of 34.25% to 42.17%, in the number of ticket buyers as compared with those four movies. And if we compare the Marvels and its 4.46 million ticket buyers with its direct predecessor, 2019's Captain Marvel, which was a dozen MCU movies ago, that was a 73.35% decline in ticket buyers, and that's an enormous decline in interest. Even though both of these movies star Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. And speaking of Brie Larson... She isn't exactly popular with the largest demographic that loves to watch superhero movies, white men. Taken from a 2021 Bounding Into Comics article, long before her 2019 movie Captain Marvel had premiered, Larson had made some rather controversial remarks during an acceptance speech for receiving the Crystal Award at the Women in Film Crystal Plus Lucy Awards in Los Angeles in June 2018, when she commented on the critics of the movie A Wrinkle in Time, in which she said, quote, I don't need a 40-year-old white dude to tell me what didn't work about A Wrinkle in Time. It wasn't made for him. I want to know what that film meant to women of color, to biracial women, to teen women of color, to teens that are biracial, unquote. And her apparent hatred and prejudice for white men did not end there. While promoting 2019's Captain Marvel, she insinuated that she wanted to have less white men on the press tour. She told Marie Claire, quote, 
About a year ago, I started paying attention to what my press days looked like and the critics reviewing movies, and noticed it appeared to be overwhelmingly white male, unquote. Continuing, she said, quote, So I spoke to Dr. Stacy Smith at the USC Annenberg Inclusion Initiative, who put together a study to confirm that. Moving forward, I decided to make sure my press days were more inclusive, unquote. Larson eventually attempted to backtrack her comments during an interview with Fox 5's Kevin McCarthy, in which she told him, quote, What I'm looking for is to bring more seats up to the table. No one is getting their chair taken away. There's not less seats at the table, there's just more seats at the table, unquote. But she didn't actually explain how that would work. From an article shared on Medium back in April, Author Joe Garza provided several reasons why Marvel fans don't like Brie Larson, which I will paraphrase. Fans don't hate Brie Larson because she's a woman. They hate her for complaining about white dudes, for starting a YouTube channel where she promotes anti-racist rhetoric and inclusive content, for the cringy, arrogant, buzzkill attitude she displays in every interview, and for being a boring, bland addition to the MCU. So yes, Brie Larson has done a great job of alienating the very people who form the largest demographic that love superhero movies. As of a 2019 survey shared by the website Statista, 61% of the men surveyed said that they were superhero fans, while only 53% of women said that they were. So men are more likely to be superhero fans than women are. From an article published by the website Very Aware earlier this year, according to a recent study, the most common Marvel movie viewer is a white male between the ages of 18 and 34. This group makes up the largest demographic of Marvel movie viewers, accounting for approximately one-third of the total audience. However, the study also found that the second largest demographic of Marvel movie viewers is actually black females, between the ages of 35 and 49, which makes up approximately one quarter of the total audience. So while white males may be the most common Marvel movie viewer, the audience for these films is actually quite diverse. People of all ages, genders, and races enjoy watching Marvel movies. And yet, woke identity politics activists believe that they have to inject their messaging into productions that already have a diverse audience that just wants to be entertained and not lectured to. To be profitable, movies need to appeal to the widest possible audience. But it's quite clear from Mia DaCosta and her all-female-led movie, The Marvels, that she was targeting female viewers only. But ironically, the largest demographic to see the movie during its opening weekend was males. According to Box Office Pro, 61% of the audience was male, which corresponds to the data from Statista that I had shared earlier that stated that 61% of men are superhero fans. And that means that only 39% of the audience was females. In other words, for a movie that was clearly designed to attract a large female audience with its all-female leads and its female antagonists, it not only failed to attract that many women at all, it attracted nearly twice as many men who weren't even the target audience. And this is completely unlike this summer's massively popular box office hit Barbie, which attracted large audiences from both genders worldwide and earned over $1.4 billion at the box office. The Marvels clearly has practically zero appeal, but why is that? According to a May 2023 article published by CBR, the 15 most popular Marvel characters are listed as follows. Spider-Man, which I can believe, Wolverine, which I can also believe, The Hulk, which surprises me given that the 2008 The Incredible Hulk movie was the first MCU movie to flop in theaters, Thanos, who was the big bad guy for several MCU movies, Iron Man, again, which doesn't surprise me other than me thinking he would be higher up on the list, possibly third, Loki, which also surprises me, but this is probably based on the Disney Plus show, Captain America, which again, I would think would be higher up on the list, probably immediately after Iron Man, Deadpool, which is one of my personal favorites, Magneto, which is a popular X-Men character along with Wolverine and Deadpool, 
Scarlet Witch, whose popularity probably has more to do with WandaVision than the second Doctor Strange movie, Black Panther, which I can believe, Storm, which from an X-Men perspective is probably correct, Daredevil, which I find doubtful, Black Widow, which I think is believable, and finally, Hawkeye, which I can believe given the Avengers movies. But where are the characters from the Marvels? You know, Captain Marvel, Ms. Marvel, Monica Rambeau, or Darben. They didn't make the cut, did they? And when you produce a film for $274.8 million or more, based on characters that no one cares about, what do you get? One of the biggest flops for 2023, just like what happened to Warner Brothers Discovery and DC Studios earlier this year with their movie Blue Beetle starring Zolo Mari Duena. Very few people went to see that movie because most people aren't familiar with the D-list superhero character Blue Beetle as I had talked about in several previous videos. The same is probably true for both Ms. Marvel, as played by Iman Vellani, and Monica Rambeau, as played by Toyona Paris. Each of these characters were featured in Disney Plus series that very few people watched. So not only did hardly anyone know who either of these characters are, they were incapable of attracting a large audience. So spending $274.8 million or more, as some are suggesting, to produce the Marvels was as completely preposterous as it was for Warner Brothers Discovery and DC Studios to produce Blue Beetle. In both instances, the only possible justification that each of these studios used was to promote identity politics messaging. And in both cases, each movie is now a very costly mistake for each of these studios. With all of the woke identity politics messaging that's been going on in Hollywood for the last few years, you'd think that the major studios and their shareholders must love losing money. Earlier this year, CEO Bob Iger laid off 7,000 people from Disney and made major cuts in spending because the company is losing money hand over fist. CEO David Zaslav made major cuts in spending at Warner Brothers Discovery last year, too. I release multiple videos about both situations as they were occurring. The woke identity politics activists who are pushing shows and movies filled with their messaging have deluded themselves into believing that a large audience exists that wants to be continually lectured to. And they succeeded in convincing the executives at Hollywood Studios to spend money producing content for their non-existent audience. But since actual audiences aren't interested, as demonstrated by the Marvels, the studios are only losing money. Hence the saying, go woke, go broke. But I can't yet end this video without mentioning some of the truly stupid plot elements in this movie that aren't helping it either. So yes, here's a spoiler alert. Apparently, when you want to quickly evacuate an orbiting space station, you have cats on board that can magically swallow people and shrink them because they take up less room in the escape pods. Now, I don't know about you, but that defies my ability to suspend my disbelief because that's stupider than some of the crap that Ruin Johnson did in Star Wars 8: The Last Jedi. Then, apparently, when two of the three leads use their powers at the same time, they switch places, but not consistently, only when the contrived plot needs it to happen. Then there's an alien planet where its inhabitants don't talk. Instead, they sing and dance because it's a totally musical planet. And my only response to that is, what the heck was Nia DaCosta smoking when she wrote this crap? The bottom line is that this is an atrocious movie that truly deserves to flop. And if you decide to go see it, you do so at your own risk. Thanks for watching today, and a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel. We appreciate your support. If you enjoyed this video, please press the like button, and please feel free to share a comment. If you'd like to help support this channel, please press the red subscribe button, and please press the bell to receive notifications for new content. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Out Loud Geek.